Hey guys, it's Vic, and today we're going to look at our ninth entry in the Victionary, the Explosher. The Victionary is a series of guides to help provide a starting point for players looking to pick up new weapons, or those who want some tips moving forward with the weapons they like. The Explosher is a slow, bulky sloshing machine of sorts. It comes equipped with a sprinkler and bubble blower, making it a turfing monster. In fact, when I play the Explosher in Ranked or Turf War, I find myself getting more points than my teammates on almost every match. This doesn't mean the Explosher should spend the entire match painting. It just means that because you're always moving around and aiming for opponents, you'll be painting a lot of the turf. The Explosher's shots are mortar blasts that do 55 damage on contact and 35 damage with a splash. This means that if you land a shot directly onto your foe, you can do 90 damage in just one shot. The Explosher doesn't suffer from falloff damage, meaning that you can deal massive blows from safe places far above your opponents. If you can't land direct hits with this weapon at first, don't fret. If you're in a safe position, you just need to land three indirect splashes to secure your splat, as long as your opponents can't escape to heal. This will deal 105 damage to your opponent, more than enough. The Explosher's wide, arcing shot means that you can perform some amazing blows that other players won't be able to see or expect until it's too late. Get that pesky sniper underneath with the perfect curved attack. Stop that Rainmaker push that none of your other straight-shooting long-range friends can hit on Sturgeon Shipyard. A few of my favorite maps to take advantage of the Explosher on are Mako Mart, Kelp Dome, and Manta Maria. In the description, I've linked a Twitter video showing some of these high-quality arc shots. The Explosher needs map control to be able to work. You're using a slow weapon that needs time and space to reposition if you get into a bad spot. You'll face certain doom if opponents paint your escape route. Don't try to aggress into enemy territory by yourself with the Explosher. In this scenario, it's best to either jump away or fire a shot at your feet. Firing a shot at your feet creates a burst bomb-like explosion that can scare your foes away, do a little bit of damage, and let you run away. The Explosher is very bad at close combat fights. You need to be sneaky and move around quickly or you're going to get splatted. If you're standing in the range of, let's say, an end zap, you'll lose that fight 9 times out of 10. If while you're winding up a shot, you find an opponent coming up to you, know that it's not the end. If you move the camera before your inkling has completely thrown your Explosher's Blast, you'll change the direction of your arc to fly where you moved your aiming reticle. Keep in mind though, it applies to normal fights too. If you start to move away from a fight too early, you might miss what was meant to be a finishing blow. One more problem that you'll have to deal with is that the Explosher doesn't have a bomb. While having this sprinkler means you can turf amazingly well in combination with your blasts, it also means you have no line of defense if you get ambushed. The Explosher pierces through everything. That includes grates. The Explosher does not explode on gratings. If you're attacking an opponent on the grates, such as on Kelp Dome or New Albacore Hotel, your attack will go right through the grates and onto the floor. You cannot do 90 damage to an opponent on the grates. This is especially hard because your opponent won't be likely to stand still on the grates, so you'll have to outplay them by knowing where they're going to go. It's a really hard fight to win. When you're playing in ranked, you can help your teammates by being a distraction and a nuisance. You can throw shots into enemy territory to cause confusion and scattering. If they can't see you, they might run in a different direction and look for an escape. In splat zones, you can cover one portion of the zone using a clever sprinkler, and the other piece with your Mortar Blasts. Sprinkler baiting is very powerful on Splat Zones when your opponents are mostly short-ranged. If they want to remove that sprinkler, they're going to have to come out to the open where you can get them in order for them to get it. <laughs> Say that one three times fast. The Explosher boasts range similar to the Rapid Blaster family of weapons, meaning that you can threaten most opponents if they start to come into your range before they can fight back. In Splat Zones, the Explosher can actually capture a small zone in just a couple of blasts, especially at the start of a match. It's really difficult for many weapons to outpaint an Explosher dedicated to the zone. And of course, you do have bubbles. Bubbles haven't changed their use. You can still use your bubble blower to easily recapture a lot of the zone in no time at all, forcing the enemy team to have to whittle down their timer again. The Explosher can break a bubble in just two shots. Did you know that you can release your bubbles faster if you dip into the ink after each bubble that you throw? This will let you move around if you need to as well. But the main point is that you'll lose some of that bubble blowing end lag and get back into the fight faster. 
Object Shredder will let you break your bubbles almost instantaneously, especially if you've guaranteed some damage on it with the help of your sprinkler. An Object Shredder enabled sprinkler is very powerful when it comes to blowing up your bubbles. Please do try it. Just remember that without any Ink Saver main or Ink Saver sub, you'll only have four shots after throwing a sprinkler. A better strategy will be to throw your sprinkler and then throw your bubbles to have a free ink refill that comes with using a special. On tower control, your mortar shot will leave no squid safe. You can paint a majority of the tower with a single blast, exposing, <laughs> exposing the location of opponents on the tower for your teammates. If no opponents appear when your shots land on the tower, your friends can use deduction to know where the tower rider must be hiding. You can paint a path of safety around the tower by keeping a sprinkler attached whenever possible. It can also eat a shot fired at you while you charge your counterattack. Throw your bubbles in front of the tower to give you or your team coverage at a checkpoint. This doesn't have to even be at a checkpoint. For example, on Kelp Dome, you can throw your bubbles during the final stretch to keep opponents from being able to rush you down as you pull up to that checkpoint. You can also fire your blasts ahead of the tower, making it extremely dangerous for your opponents to approach the tower to try and climb on. Do they want to take all that splash damage just to start a push? Probably not. Be wary of doing this if your opponent might be long-ranged. They might move right past the tower and try to fight you instead. The Explosher can break the Rainmaker shield in about four blasts. That's impressive. You can also paint the map very well, giving the Rainmaker carrier lots of movement options and paths to work with to get as close to the podium as possible. You can oh so innocently leave a sprinkler on the other side of the map to reclaim turf while you make your push. You can also farm free bubbles this way to use later on. You can use your bubble blower to stop an opposing enemy push in their tracks or to scare opponents away. You can also take advantage of these bubbles to paint extra space for your Rainmaker teammates to keep running or use it as a shield. Fire ahead of your Rainmaker teammate to take out foes that might be charging towards them. Carrying the Rainmaker as an Explosher player is not too great. Because you're already a heavy weapon, your swim speed while carrying the Rainmaker is terrible. Be careful to check if any opponents have Toxic Mist at the start of a match, because if you're carrying the Rainmaker and land in Mist, you'll be slowed to a crawl. Understandably, if your teammates accidentally leave the Rainmaker behind, you can pick it up to prevent your opponents from having a chance to steal it. On Clamplets, the same thoughts apply like in Rainmaker. You're slow. You don't make the best big clam carrier, but nothing stops you from being close. Hold as many clams as you can without getting a large clam, and then pass them off to your teammates when they're close. You can also throw your bubble blower to prevent opponents from stopping your push, pass clams to your teammates, and then watch them score many more points than they would have without you. Fire your shots where you predict opponents to come in to stop your clam push to keep the upper hand. Your sprinkler can help keep opponents from waltzing into your base with clams in tow. Check your map occasionally and see what's going on. Is an area you had protected with a sprinkler suddenly the wrong color? Someone has probably passed through here in an attempt to score some clams. Don't forget that your opponents might know how to juggle. Your sprinkler will also do chip damage onto opponents that get too close. If you have it on a wall near the clam podium, it can stop opponents in their tracks if they get stuck on small bits of ink that fall onto them. A few fun places with tricky walls include the reef and walleye warehouse. Of course, firing your shots ahead of an approaching big clam carrier will force that opponent to either rush in with damage or reposition. You can sometimes stop what could have been a big push. That's all I had to say about the Explosher. It's a slow but powerful slosher that's terrifying in the right hands. It has a very high skill floor which scares some people off from using it. If you'd like to give it a try and work through its kinks, you could find yourself a new main. If you're an aggressive player, just keep in mind that you can't flank as well with this weapon. Instead, you're the anchor of your team in many situations. Take pride in your position and move in with your team for maximum efficiency in your next game of Ranked. Object Shredder and Special Power-Up will make you very scary. Thermal Ink will let you see where your opponents move, meaning that they won't be safe from you even if they try to hide behind a wall. Thanks, Humorous Hawk, for the suggestion. Leave a comment below on what weapon you'd like me to look at next time. I always pick a comment randomly, so you could be next. Interested in other weapons? Take a look at the ones I've already done and see if a weapon that suits your style has already been covered. Don't be afraid to leave your own thoughts on the Explosher or other weapons in the comments below. You might be able to improve your own play or help others by taking time to talk strategy. Thank you for watching and have a nice day!